Well, good evening. good evening. We want to welcome you on this Ash Wednesday celebration. We begin the kind of the doorway into the season of Lent. Lent is that time when we look at with penitence into our hearts and recognize the need for our Savior. With that said, we invite you to receive ashes. Ashes are the Old Testament way of people mourning sin and also mourning um, sadness. And so they would wear, they would put sackcloths uh, and then ashes on their forehead. And so the church continues that through its worship. And so we'll make the sign of the cross on one's forehead. If you don't want it on your forehead, you can also receive it on the uh, outside of your palm. So just to let you know that. So we just want you to be aware of that as well, too. So with that said, let's rise and greet those around us with a hand of fellowship. Welcome. We begin with our opening hymn entitled, Savior When in Dust to Thee.
of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. In ancient times, people might display their sorrow over sin by scattering dust and ashes on their heads. A reminder that in Eden, God decreed death as the penalty for sin. You are dust, and to dust you shall return. Yet God also promised that a Savior would come to destroy the power of the tempting serpent who had brought sin and death into God's creation. In his suffering, the inspired prophet Job spoke of his truth in the Lord's promise. For I know that my Redeemer lives, and at the last he will stand upon the earth. Confident in his Redeemer's love, Job confessed his sins. I despise myself and repent of dust and ashes. Remember that the promised Savior, Jesus, our Redeemer, shed his blood on the cross for us. We take on to ourselves a mark of repentance. You're invited to come forward at the direction of the ushers to receive the mark of ashes to remember that we, like Job, repent in dust and ashes. At this time, you're invited to come forward and receive ashes. If you're not able to, I will go around and at the end to give ashes to people. sing together our hymn.
receive the symbol of repentance, let us confess our sins to God our Savior, using the words of Psalm da Psalmist David. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love, according to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. God has had mercy on us, and for his sake of Christ Jesus, our Redeemer, he has forgiven our sins. I announce to you that your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me with a willing spirit, we pray. Heavenly Father, on this day when we come before you and we begin the season of Lent, may our hearts see you in all that we do and in your cross, the forgiveness by which you bear for us. Strengthen us on this journey of Lent that we may cling to you and seek your cross. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. Our Old Testament lesson for today comes from Psalm 103, verses 8 through 14. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. He will not always chide, nor will he keep his anger forever. He does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his steadfast love toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far does he remove our transgressions from us. As a father shows compassion to his children, so the Lord shows compassion to those who fear him, for he knows our frame. He remembers that we are dust. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle reading for today comes from the Apostle Paul's letter to the Colossians. We hear these words from chapter 1. And so, from the day we heard, we have not ceased to pray for you, asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding, so as to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might for all endurance and patience with joy giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. He has delivered us from the dominion of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Our bell choir will now play.
we rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 23rd chapter. And as they led him away, they seized one Simon of Cyrene, who was coming in from the country and laid on him the cross to carry it behind Jesus. And there followed him a great multitude of the people and of women who were mourning and lamenting for him. But turning to them, Jesus said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For behold, the days are coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren and the woman, wombs that never bore and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, fall on us, and to the hills cover us. For if they do these things when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Two others who were criminals were led away to be put to death with him. And when they came to the place that is called the skull, there they crucified him. The criminals, one on his right and one on his left. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they cast lots to divide his garments. You may be seated. Gentlemen, I got something for you both right here. You get to have one of these, okay? So today is Valentine's Day, right? And so with Valentine's Day, there comes a lot of love, right? We wear, of course, hearts, and we also recognize candy and roses. And so um, if we haven't bought gifts yet, we still can go to Walmart. <laughs> That's a joke. The point that I'm getting at is when we consider John 3.16, John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world, right? And he gave his one and only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. You know, the point of that, I think, when we hear that word love, is sometimes we think of love in different ways, right? We love mommies and daddies. We love our friends. We love each other. But yet, when we think about love, not just as an emotion, but also as, a, as an act, right? God's death on the cross was for our salvation. And so that's God's love. Ultimately, the season of Valentine's Day comes and goes, but the love that God has for us stays. And so that's something to remember. I'm sorry if I gave the boys those things to play. So. But with that said, they, they get to show that love that Jesus has for them. The cross as well, too, is that mark of love. Not a heart, not pink, not red, but a place where Jesus died for, the, for us. And so that's the love that he has for us. So we invite you to continue our worship today. <clears throat>
Grace, peace, and mercy from God our Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, dear friends, today is Ash Wednesday, of course, and we welcome the season of Lent. Lent is really a journey, and that's something that I think we want to attain and kind of consider as we journey with Jesus. And we're guided by the cross. And that's really the theme in which we're looking at, guided to the cross. Jesus Christ, of course, died on that cross. And it all sets the stage for the season of Holy Week. But you know, in these 40 days of Lent, we're meant to journey with the Lord as he heads to the cross. But we're also going to find there the need for a savior. Week in and week out, we will journey through the cross to Calvary. And we must consider then ourselves and the journey that we're taking. You see, on this first Ash Wednesday, one of the things that we're asked to do is not to just place ashes on our foreheads in the sign of the cross. Yes, that's good, and that's a good remembrance of the fact that Jesus died for us. But also it's a journey inward to look at the things that hold us, the sin that binds us, the ways we journey. It's a prideful path that we're going to have to look at. Evil and destruction in ourselves, in the world, and also in the devil are what Jesus will go to the cross for as we see the symbols of ash and dust. They point us back to the very fact that Adam and Eve, made in God's image, were made from the dust. God breathed into them life, and they lived in a perfect relationship with God without sin, without death, without ill. But yet, humanity in its sinfulness became finite. Death began to take hold, and all of creation itself fell in its relationship with God the Father. To this day, then, we are reminded that we are sinners, and sin binds us, and we are mortal. Ash Wednesday is meant to be a day of somberness and sadness, of ashes and placed on the forehead is a sign of the cross. The sign of the cross points in a new direction in which what God planned to do for sinners. The cross of Christ helps the fundamental problem that all of humanity has. The cross becomes the starting point of forgiveness and also becomes the end of death. You see, forgiveness itself is the bedrock of God. It's the bedrock of God's word. It's the bedrock of our faith in Christ. Forgiveness is that number one event that the cross gives to us. Again and again, when we confess our sins, God faithfully and is just will forgive our sins. Forgiveness sometimes is so easy to understand. Jesus died on the cross, but so hard to really understand. In his death and in his life and, forgive, and his resurrection, he provided the punishment for that sin. Jesus himself, tortured in our place, died the criminal's death. Again and again, when we sin, Christ's death forgives those sins. See, the cross is the forgiveness that God bestows to us, but it also teaches us that the sinless life suffered for the death of sinners comes at a great price. And with that great price, then, we cannot look at sin as a simple thing. We look at it with bended knees. At the foot of the cross, we confess our sins to God and the forgiveness that he gives to us is without question. The remorse of sin, our knowledge, our acceptance of this amazing grace of the crucified Christ is only made possible as God pours forth that forgiveness and faith in us and through us. We now are fully forgiven people and we should live in that forgiveness. 
Our lives should be steered and guided by the principle of forgiveness. And no matter what we've done, God has forgiven us. But it's not a cheap thing to be had or even to behold. It came at the great price of his son's death. We no longer are subject to God's wrath, for our sins have been poured on him, Christ. So the first words that come out of our mouths are, I am forgiven in Christ. And sin is no more. Forgiveness is a hard concept to wrap our minds around because we demand forgiveness from God, but when it comes to others, how then do we live? You see, we see this, right, in the disciples' struggle. Peter once came to Jesus and asked him a question that we probably all would ask. Lord, how many times must I forgive my brother who sins against me? Peter asked seven times. It seemed to Peter that that was enough. To the rabbis, they said three. To Peter, he said seven. But Jesus went on to say, no, I don't say seven times, but 77 times. A clever way of saying there is no limit to the number of times that you are to forgive someone else. You see, forgiveness is hard because the forgiveness we receive we're now called to bestow on others. Because of the cross, we know the certainty of forgiveness, and it's not some pants, fancy passing. Instead, it comes at a deep price, and we then, in turn, are called to forgive others. But that's where sin lies, doesn't it? It's so easy to forgive those we love and we like, but not those that hurt us or cause us shame. Many times in the scriptures, Jesus is clear that the priority, the top priority, is to be that of forgiveness. Jesus had no problem spending time with sinners, but he called them out of sin in order that they would be forgiven. God works also for the lost and those that are wayward. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, but all are justified by his grace in Christ Jesus. There are many symbols of forgiveness. The rituals of remembering our sins, the wearing of ashes, the signs of crosses, the washing of feet and of hands, and even all of those are spiritually and emotionally deep. But taking time to understand God's forgiveness and the light that he cleanses us of our sins can be overwhelming and profound. You see, by the death of Christ, we now wear the robes of righteousness. He has placed upon us not death that we deserve, but he gave to us forgiveness. See, death now becomes a doorway to new life, renewal, and restoration. There is no fear for those who are forgiven by Christ Jesus. And there is no dread as we look at the cross. We can now see him. And we find in Christ that cross. As we are guided to the cross this season, may we find strength in his word. Amen. With that said, we rise to confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Our choir will sing a Lenten response.
we rise to pray. Almighty and merciful God, we approach your throne of grace today as sinners who require your cleansing. Lord, have, mercy. have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Lord, have mercy. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Lord, have mercy. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities. Lord, have mercy. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Lord, have mercy. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me with a willing spirit. Lord, have mercy. Then I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners will return to you. All these things we pray in the name of Jesus who cleanses us from all unrighteousness. Amen. In boldness we pray together the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father and everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who having created all things, took on human flesh and was born of the Virgin Mary. For our sake he died on the cross and rose from the dead to put an end to death and thus fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying... Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he gave it, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you, this do in remembrance of me. And also after supper, he also took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them also, saying, Take and drink. This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed also for you for the remission of sins. This do also in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and we drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. We sing.
Lord Jesus Christ keep you the true faith for life and truth. Depart in peace. Amen. Welcome to the Lord's table. The true body of Christ giving to you. The true body of Christ giving to you. and sing together the song of Simeon.
God the Father, the fountain source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh. We thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled to serve you constantly, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. We give thanks to the God, the Father, who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. He has delivered us from the dominion of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you, be gracious to you. The Lord lift up you a countenance and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn, Jesus Sinners Doth Receive. Again, thank you all for being here.